And um, if uh, I'll just be checking my email. If Peggy has any troubles, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure she gets in. Okay. I will. Should I call her name or not? Do you think? Uh, yeah. Just yeah. You can okay. Do I'm Judy Strayer and as chair of the local Amherst Local Historic District Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 3:02 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. I will now take attendance by roll call. Bruce Coldham. Here. Rita Wilcox. Here. Karen Winter. Here. Peggy Schwartz. Jim Lumley. Here. I'm Judy Strayer and I am here. Also based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A section 20 and signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020, this hearing and meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. So we have, um, we ready to get started or our? Yeah, we have our applicants here. Applicants here. Should we, we'll start with 285 Main Street. Great, that sounds good. I'll bring in uh, Pat Kamen's here. That looks like we got Peggy. Bless you. Thank you. Am I? Am I? Hey, Peggy, we can see you. Okay. And that, okay. okay. Sorry about being late and uh, and then having technical difficulty. No problem. I'm here. Everybody, can you hear me? Patrick. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Great. So uh, Pat Kamins is here uh, as the applicant. Um, so I'll, as you all know, we're talking about the detached garage uh, behind the apartment building at 285 Main Street. Um, and it's proposed for demolition. And just um, a little bit of background, the Amherst Historical Commission um, under Article 13 um, did a review at a public hearing and also approved uh, the garage for demolition, finding it to be not significant. But as a uh, because it's included in the local historic district as well, um, the local historic district commission um, needs to review the the project for for demolition. And so I'll just invite uh, Mr. Caymans if you want to say a few words um, describing the project and the impetus for demolition and and kind of what, what you're envisioning for the space next. Thank you, Ben. Hello, everybody. Um, you may remember uh, this house is right next to 321 Main and right across from Emily Dickinson's house, a couple, you know, up, up from the police station a little bit. Um, this was the one that we had lit on fire by some students lighting fireworks off on the interior, and we lost most of the building to fire. Um, oh, thank you, Ben. Mm -hmm. So we rebuilt the entire interior and we wanted to, for a few years, pave the rest of the lot um, to improve parking and because it's the time to pave and um, you'll see that stone wall to Ben's right, uh, right where it says customer parking. So it looks like you were probably in 321 Main Street when you were taking that picture, Ben, I'm yeah. guessing, yeah. which is owned by a different um, owner, actually. Um, but anyway, you see the stone wall there. So we want to repair that and do the paving or whatever. And that dilapidated garage slash barn slash whatever you want to call it in the back really serves us no purpose. We don't store anything in it. There's no utilities to it. We can't park cars in it. Um, so it just seems to be an eyesore. Um, it's the old color. You know, it matches the old building, does not match the new building. Um, so we'd like your blessing to remove that structure so we can add three or four parking spaces for the um when we do the paving project thank you thank you and um, i'll just show this other image this is 
taken from the sidewalk. So like behind me would be the Dickinson Museum. And this is just to show that technically it is um, visible from the public way uh, from the sidewalk on Main Street. Kind of you can see the the back of the garage through there as well. Um, so that's what you would see from the from the street. Oh, and the the photograph before that was not. Uh... This is from. Uh, oh, I see. Think, I'm trying to think oh, what yes. businesses are there, like Elements Hot Tub, I think. Is yes, there. Uh, stakeholders yeah. and no, the framing place, so Elements not... place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I know. That's exactly that's where I park my car when I visit Andrew. So now I know exactly where we are. Right. Yep. <laughs> if I may, Ben, that's not that's not Elements. It's not that far down the street. Not it's that far um, down. the frame shop and it's the dance studio and the doggy right. dog wash. Right. Oh, okay. That's right. That's yep. not building. Thank you. Yep. Well, this seems to me to be one of the most straightforward uh, requests we've ever had. Um, and I'm on the point of moving uh, to grant the application. But uh, Ben, uh, this is not a certificate of appropriateness, is it? Or is it? Is it formally and technically a certificate of appropriateness to that, that it's appropriate to demolish the garage? Is that the way we are framing this? Yep. Yeah, it's the uh, yeah, it's you know, it's a, obviously a, a change to a, an exterior feature of a structure, you know, so it's it's yeah. the demo in this case, it's full demolition. Okay. Um, yes. And, and, and I don't think that the, the subsequent repaving doesn't necessarily need a certificate of appropriateness, because it, um, it's not a structure, but it's the it's the removal of this garage okay. that yeah. Well, for the purposes of moving us forward, uh, I'll move uh, that we grant the certificate of appropriateness that involves the demolition of the uh, the garage, uh, and finding that uh, it's consistent with section eight point one and three, and uh, and will not uh, uh, involve any detrimental effect on the uh, Dickinson Historical District. I, I second. I think that's the motion. Yeah, I second. Thank you. Let's call a vote. Um, Karen Winter. I approve. Bruce Colbum. I approve. Greta Wilcox. I approve. Jim Lumley. I approve. Peggy Schwartz. I approve. I'm Judy Strayer and I approve. Great. Oh, thank you all. Um, and thanks for coming. Mr. Kamins will uh, get that permit processed shortly and uh, you can work on the demolition once you have the building permit in hand. Okay, great. Thanks everybody, appreciate it. Thanks. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. Well, Ben, you got another easy one? Yeah, <laughs> uh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, well, great, we'll move on to our next um, hearing. Uh, we have for uh, 46 Fearing Street, does that sound good, Judy? Yes, we do, yeah. Okay. So I'll invite our applicants in here. Hi, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Hi. Do you want me to get going? I don't know if you want to read anything beforehand or if we'll just get started. I don't need, do I need to read it a second time? I'm sorry. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Now we can just start. Thank you. Great. Um, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Tom Reedy, an attorney with Bacon Wilson here in Amherst, uh, here on behalf of the applicant for a certificate of appropriateness. Um, with me this afternoon, Barry Roberts, uh, the applicant. Um, hopefully this is another easy one. So if I could, I think what I'll do is I will share my screen just to give you a little bit of site context. So 46 Fearing Street is the, the box that is highlighted here is a parcel that is highlighted. 
Uh, you'll see just to orient you on the east, you've got North Pleasant Street here. Over here, you've got Sunset Ave and then Lincoln Ave in the middle. Um, this is a currently vacant parcel in the RG zoning district. Um, Barry acquired this along with some other back land here. I want to say maybe it was a year or so ago. Um, you may remember that we were here for 164 and 174 sunset. Um, we talked about a proposed project, which was still working our way through the Zoning Board of Appeals. And part of the discussion and one of the conditions I think you put on, because we said we were going to relocate it, was see if you can relocate it to Amherst. And so we're happy to say we're going to be, you know, with your approval, of course, uh, relocating it to Amherst. And so the, the proposal, and I'll show it on the next, um, uh, the next screen, but the proposal is going to be to relocate it to this parcel right here, um, which, you know, not to get into the weeds too much, but I know that the neighborhood had had some concerns given that Barry had acquired this land back here. And there was a thought that, oh, you know, there may be some driveway access to all of this area back here from Fearing Street in, into, this, um, into this vacant land. And so I'll, I'll say obviously, but obviously by putting the house there, you know, that was never the plan. And this is just another kind of uh, instance of showing that that's, that's not what Barry was looking to do. So this is for context. And then I will share my screen. Hopefully you can all see uh, the plan. And so for orientation, um, up is actually south. So down is, is north. Fearing Street here, North Pleasant would be on the left side of the screen, and then you'd have Lincoln, and then further off the screen, you would have um, Sunset. The idea is to take 174 Sunset, load it up on a truck, come up Fearing Street, and then uh, place it right here on site. Uh, we do have a proposed garage. Frankly, we don't have it designed yet. Um, I think one of the things, you, if everything goes well, this gets moved in about July. I think once that gets placed, we'll have a better idea of what this is going to look like in relation to the proposed dwelling. And we'll be back to you at that point for a certificate of appropriateness for the garage. Um, and so Ben, I don't know if, I, I'm, I'm happy to keep all of this up, but if you wanna show some existing photographs, the idea is the front door that you see uh, at sunset would be right here. So it's just, we're, we're, we're taking it and just rotating it um, 90 degrees, you know, so just, just slightly um, so that the front door then would be facing north, whereas the front door currently faces east, if I was. Um, so with that, Ben, I don't know if you want to go to any of the photographs or if we want to, if anybody has any questions on this plan before I stop sharing my screen. Um, sure, I can show some pictures um, of the property. So we're again, we're talking about 174 Sunset Ave, which is the uh, yellow house with green shutters shown here. Um, here's just three pictures, kind of different angles. And, you know, I've also asked Tom if he could describe any, just so he covers all of his bases, any other changes that are being made to the house, just so um, don't need to come back. But it sounds like, you know, for the most part, it'll be moved intact is the is the plan um yeah and, essentially the so yeah. that detached garage isn't coming you know on the right side there and then there's a porch yeah. on the back that also isn't coming just because okay. of logistics yeah um but so i right yeah I, you know i would expect we'll probably repair or, or place a new shutter up there if you look yeah right there um barry any ideas of changing the color of the house or is it are, we, are you thinking about keeping it the same? Mm -hmm. so I hadn't intended to change the uh, color. Okay. And also, how, house color is exempt from local historic district. Oh, good. Okay. But yeah. Um, so yeah, just so you all can see, there is a, a you can barely see it. There's a detached garage off to the right here that I guess is that that'll just be demoed at that point. That's and, the idea. Then, and then the back porch that you can't see here. So I just, I just want to make sure we're capturing all of that in the motion, I guess. Um, 
So I, uh, Barry, uh, Tom, uh, Ben, I imagine that the single story uh, um, addition on the left hand side that that is not coming. Barry, you can mute on mute, but I think it is coming. That should be coming. Oh, it is. Yeah. I, that it is just, coming. Yeah. So the the lot is wide enough to take all that. No, that's yeah. interesting. Thank you. And then has got a uh, hand up. I also have a question. I like the color a lot, so I'm glad to hear you might keep the color. But I also noticed the house had a lot of deferred maintenance. And I wondered, and I'm glad to hear you're going to fix the shutter, but I wondered if something will be done to um, spruce it up a little too. So. Barry, I think the answer will probably be yes. I don't know if you want to unmute, but I, I see this very similar to what Barry did over at uh, Snell and Baker Street. So if you've seen what that house, I mean, I think it's gone through a new paint job or, or will if it hasn't already, it's some nice landscaping around it. So yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's an investment. It's not just picking it up and moving it. It's Barry's got a, a stable of, of really great subcontractors who can, who can do some work and just make sure that it's um, given a little bit more love than it has probably had in the recent Good. past. Thank you. And just to show a little bit more information, this is the, if you can use your imagination, this is the picture of the vacant lot at 46 Fearing Street. I don't know exactly where the property line is, but you know, maybe there's a shrub line over here and a, dr a driveway to the right over here. So, um, whoops, yeah, here's just another angle of the lot. Mm. So that pole might come down and uh, all the wires will come down. Yeah, Barry, they'll they'll drop those wires, right? And then they'll drive over them. Temporarily, they'll move the wires and we'll go in this driveway and bring the house uh, towards the the east end of the property. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. So the yeah. trees on the street could stay. Yes. Or, or will. Yeah. Nice. And I'd be curious to know what will happen with the uh, the lot that is currently occupied. That will then not have a house on it. Is that our, under our purview in any way, or should that be a, a concern for us or not? That's the uh, the that's the site we've we've asked them to move the house off and into oh, Amherst oh, oh. if possible. So they're doing the exactly what we asked them to do. Okay, I've, I've lost that. Hi, Karen. Yeah, I, I think it's a great solution. I'm so glad you have that lot and that that house will find a home there. And I think it's going to fit in beautifully. So I think this is kind of an easy one because, um, yeah, when, I, when we asked you to move it, I was skeptical that you could find a good place for it, but you have. So I'm, I think it's great. I think it's brilliant. Uh, I mean, it's, it's moving houses is not easy. You've got trees and all these things, and, and it's just it seems like it shouldn't be too difficult because people hear people having done it throughout history, but with all the regulations and things we have now, and all of the infrastructure that here now that wasn't here, you know, fifty or hundred years ago, it's really difficult to do. And um, Barry's just somebody who does it, and we're very fortunate, I think, that. Uh, um, so I, again, this is this is no problem at all for me. I so I'll move to, that we grant the certificate of appropriateness yeah. for the uh, um, for the proposition uh, of the relocation you, of the house. Before you do that, I just want to uh, see if there's any more comments, and also open it up to public comment as well. Yeah. Jim. Oh, I guess you're right. We have to close just, the public hearing before we can yeah. do this, don't we? I just want to jump in along with everybody else, complimenting Barry on following. Uh, you know, our suggestion and that being able to keep it in Amherst. I think that that's great. Thank you. I agree. Um, are there any members of the public that would like to comment? Great. And so for if anyone's joined uh, via telephone um, to raise your hand, uh, you can press star nine. Otherwise, if you're here on a computer, uh, go down to the bottom of the screen and click raise hand. So we'll um, start with Mr. Gensler, I see with his hand up. 
Hi, my name is Edwin Gensler, and um, I am uh, I live at uh, 43 Fearing Street, which is just across the street. Um, I may be a little late. You've probably already covered this, but um, when the house was owned by Stephen Fletcher and um, the Averills were living there, uh, Warren, Martha, and their son. Um, they had told me uh, oftentimes that, uh, Edwin, don't worry, nobody's going to move in or build across the street because it's a wetland. That area used to be a lake. And, um, I did note that the conservation commission did look into this and they, um, they, what's it? they did, they found standing water there. They put up the little blue flags and uh, it looked like that the, that area was going to come under a certain amount of uh, consideration for being designated a wet area or that at least there would be a certain barrier between uh, the edges of that wetland and where uh, a house could be located. And I was wondering if the, I'm sure uh, Mr. Roberts knows all about this. Um, he's appealed the decision of the Conservation Commission. And I'm sure the Historical Commission knows about that as well. But I would just like to ask the questions. The Averills and the Fletchers are still around. They're not in Amherst. They've been, uh, they've moved, uh, but there's a, uh, the children are certainly around. And uh, I was just wondering if anybody has looked into the history of uh, that particular property and how it was zoned when the Averills were living there and the Fletchers were living there. Um, Mr. Roberts probably knows about this too. I think he was, he knows about that area pretty well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roberts? Yes, uh, if Tom could put the uh, site plan back up, you can see that we are locating the house 50 feet away from the designated wetlands in conversation with the uh, CONCOM. Please see the, so to Barry's see the point. The implied wetlands that he was speaking of, and we need to be 50 feet away from there, and that's where we are locating the house. Um, is my mic still on? Hello. Yes. Um, okay. Well, I guess that satisfies the requirements of of. Uh, of the town. Uh, the area is still awfully wet. Uh, the Avers of Warren had uh, dug a little drainage ditch that took the drain that property into Tan Brook on the uh, on the south side. And uh, that brook is no longer or that canal or bridge or uh, ditch or I'm, I'm not too sure what the terminology will be is uh, blocking up with leaves pretty quickly. And the area where the proposed house location is, is still awfully wet. In fact, you can see the ridges, uh, Warren Averill would fill that in with leaves every year, the town of Amherst would uh, drop its leaves in his driveway and he would, he tried to fill in that lake. Uh, he wasn't successful, but he was successful in creating certain ridges uh, where he tried to plant some uh, vegetables. It didn't work very well because the area was so wet. But you, if you look at it, you can physically still see some of the ridges. They're starting to flatten out now. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm nervous about that. Uh, is all I just want to, and I just wondered if, yeah, it's, yeah, we can develop empty lots, empty, it's not really empty. Some beautiful trees on that property. There's also a chestnut tree on that same property. Um, so I am concerned about what's gonna to happen to that. 
And then what's going to happen to uh, the water in my basement? The water now doesn't go to the south, it goes to the north, which flows right through my property. And uh, in the spring anyway, it's guaranteed to be in my basement. Um, thank you, Mr. Gensler. Uh, Mr. Roberts, you had a, your hand up? Yes, um, I am aware of the wetness of the area and I don't envision a full basement here. Uh, I envision a crawl space, uh, protected crawl space because, just because of that issue. So that's my plan right now. Great, thank you, Barry. Okay. Oops. Um, Did we lose? We lost him. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, let's see if we can rejoin us. But we have uh, one other public comment with hand up. Um, yes. So, uh, caller with the ending in five three four three. I think um, you can unmute by pressing star six on your phone. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi there. Yes, we can hear you. Hi, my name is Jennifer Larson, and I live on the other side of this property at 38 Searing Street. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks. So I'm outside standing right now in the ridges that you were just talking about. <laughs> and yeah, they're, they're pretty deep and it's pretty wet here. Um, I've been here for a year. I moved here last summer, so I've just about been able to see the full cycle. Um, it's, it's definitely wet here. Um, and I also wonder about, you know, the stuff that's going on in the back with Tanbrook, how that's related. If the, I have a, a lot of information, so I'm just going to throw it at you and then we'll see what comes out of it. Um, the 50 foot delineation from the wetlands, you know, part of why I chose to live here was because of this amazing wetland and brook and, you know, the access in the little forest in the back and, um, how that will be impacted what this will look like as a um, construction project for us, the neighbors who live nearby, you know, what's the timetable, what's involved, um, and just making sure that this build is just right here on this property and not really going any further back into the little bit of forest that abuts it. Would you be able to speak to all of that? Through the chair, I mean, Ben, you, you so obviously some of the stuff is outside of the jurisdiction. We're here for certificate of appropriateness, um, but I, I think we're fine answering you know, most of the questions. So this, um, we're just talking about the relocation of a single family home to be put on that vacant parcel. Um, mm -hmm. It is not impacted by the, uh, the conservation commission um, delineation, uh, claiming that Tan Brook is a perennial stream versus an intermittent stream that's currently working its way through DEP, but this is outside, even if it were to be considered uh, perennial, this area is still outside of the 200 feet, so it's not going to be impacted by that determination one way or another. Um, okay. And this, and, and so this uh, lot, the revised lot line is, the, the lot's only 14,500 square feet. And so mm -hmm. the, this proposal isn't to go any further back into the, the wetlands or the forested, the wooded area at all back okay. there. Um, and as far as the timeline goes, you know, I would think that um, Barry would try to get out there probably in June at some point to do some site prep. Uh, and then the move happens overnight. So either I think you know, mid July is when it's slated for, and it's takes a lot of coordination with the utility companies, with the police, uh, et cetera, um, with the building movers. And, and these are very um, experienced building movers. And so then it's once the site is prepped and I'll ask Barry in a minute, whether or not he's going to put in the crawl space before, or if he's going to, do the same thing that he did over at Snell Baker, where it's just kind of propped up on those stilts. Um, 
And then once it's, once it's there, they, they lower it with hydraulics. It sits on its foundation, its crawl space. Uh, and then that's it. So, you know, where a regular build might take, I don't know, six months, eight months. Barry, you probably have a better idea of a, you know, stick built from scratch. You know, this one's probably a, a, a quarter of that time, maybe. And then, and then there'll be some work outside fixing uh, shutters and any, you know, insect damage, et cetera. But you're, you're looking at a much, much more benign product than what you would have if it was a single family home stick built from the ground up. Well, that's reassuring. Thank you. Barry, anything to add on, on timeline or anything? I No, I think you're about right. Three to four months would be the maximum time it'll take us. You know, um, like in Snell Baker, the one we moved there, uh, we're just doing the landscaping and seeding the lawn today. We, we moved a house there, put the utilities back in. And of course we have to reconnect the water, the sewer and the furnace and all that. And then we went through and painted the inside of the house. And then we just painted the outside of the house and put the landscaping in. So I think if you drive by Snell Baker, you can see a, a real nice looking house that ended up being saved and moved. And that's what we want to do here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm glad to hear that it won't be big towering townhomes, that it will in fact be a, a lovely house next to me. And, you know, maybe this is or isn't appropriate for this conversation, but since we're talking about a certificate of appropriateness, I do hope that there will actually be a single family rather than college students as my next door neighbors. Um, does anybody have anything to add? If not, uh, I guess the process is that we move to close the public hearing. Is that correct? Yeah, just uh, thank you for your comment, uh, Ms. Larson. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, great. Is there any other uh, members of the public wishing to make a comment? Uh, nope. Okay. I think we're good. I see Mr. Gensler's hand is still up. Um, might have another comment to make or? Does he? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, just uh, quickly, Mr. Gensler, I saw your hand was still up. Do you have another comment to make or was it up from previously? Uh, this is more of a question than a comment. Uh, yeah. One of the things that's happening, especially on this end of Fearing Street, is that we're getting a, a, a uh, absentee owners that are renting to students. And I don't know if the historical commission has any control over that or not, or not. I think you really just look at sort of outsides of buildings and not inside, but the committee's been talking about this as being a single, single family home. And I think all of us in the neighborhood are very concerned about, uh, uh, the, the what I call the Philippization of uh, that end of Fearing Street now. And I think that in its own way rubs against the goals of the Historic Commission and at least that historical district. Um, so it's one thing to talk about moving a single family house, but then it really becomes the owner's discretion as to whom he or she would rent. And I guess my question is for the commission, we have a beautiful neighborhood now of some single families, some owner occupied rentals, and uh, a handful of uh, absentee owner rentals going on there. And what is the question is just what is the goal for the historic district in that neighborhood? If uh, and if the historic commission has any say on uh, on on that matter, thank you. That's all. Uh, I do not believe we do. No, I'm... that's correct. You know, we 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 understand and and certainly appreciate your comments, um, but we have no control over over that. 
So. Yes. Is there somebody at uh, in the town that may have some control over that? I guess I was wondering what was that area zoned 50, 75 years ago when the Averills moved in? And okay. why would Warren and Martha, who have been there a long time, I mean, they were in their 90s when they mm -hmm. moved there, uh, if they might know, and why would they share with me that this is a wetland? I'm, I'm not sure. You might want to uh, contact the, um, perhaps the Conservation Commission in town. I'm not sure what the appropriate. Mm -hmm. I have contacted them. They do not have that authority, no. Right. I, I think that we can say that uh, these varying levels of uh, accuracy and perspicacity when it comes to people in neighborhoods, uh, figuring out what the likely possibilities are regarding theirs and other properties. And as far as wetlands are concerned, of course, it changes with time. This is not something that's, that's static. True. So uh, I, would, I would say it would be very difficult to um, identify uh, with any accuracy what, uh, what was. And in fact, I'm not even sure when did we start, uh, when was zoning enacted in this town? It possibly uh, in my lifetime. So uh, that would mean that maybe there was no zoning <laughs> when your neighbor- That could very well be, yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for your um, attention. Thank you. Thanks. Oops. Um, all right, well, I think uh, we can end public comment at this point. Um, and then if, unless there's any other questions or comments from commission members, uh, we can move on. So we can close public meeting now. Oh, sorry, huh? Rita. I was just gonna thank you for finding a space and saving a beautiful old house. I knew four children who grew up in that house. And so it's nice to see staying in the neighborhood. So I guess uh, move to close the public hearing. So um, do, we, do we take roll call for that? Well, yeah, we just... probably need a second. Second. Thank you. Um, Greta Wilcox. Uh, I agree. Sorry. Uh, uh, Karen Winter. I approve. Peggy Schwartz. Approve. Jim Lumley. I approve. Bruce Coldham. Yes. I'm Judy Strayer and I approve. So uh, at this point, I guess uh, I could proceed with that motion that I um, shouldn't have moved earlier, <laughs> shouldn't have begun to try. Um, so I apologize for that. I had forgotten uh, that this wasn't as uh, perfunctory as perhaps the previous one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, move that uh, the commission grant a certificate of appropriateness uh, involving the uh, proposed relocation of the house uh, on, on sunset to the proposed new location uh, at um, 46 uh, Fearing Street. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, well with the I, I would just I would just add that and also the the demolition of the detached garage and end of the rear porch yes I, haven't we already <laughs> approved that in the uh, previous hearing related to fearing street uh, I think we well, maybe we didn't. Maybe we said if there was, uh, if it wasn't moved, then we wanted to. Okay, uh, including yes. If you add the, uh, the mm -hmm. uh, including the demolition of the uh, existing garage and uh, and and marginal portions of the buildings uh, that are not appropriate for relocation. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Um, a second. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> um, okay, let's vote. Uh, Greta Wilcox? Yes. Thank you. Karen Winter? Yes. Peggy Schwartz? Yes. Jim Lumley? Yes. Bruce Coldham? <laughs> yes. I'm Judy Strayer, and I also vote yes. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Barry. Yeah. Thank you, Barry. Thank you okay. very much. You, Tom. Great. So, so I had I uh, just had included on our agenda um, to go once we ended the public hearings, uh, which we just did. If if uh, it's optional, if we wanted to just check in about anything else, including the um, uh, district, the study committee. Um, and if there's any, you know, uh, kind of next steps you want, you all want to check in on about that, or um, but if not, I think we could could adjourn. Anybody have any any updates from anyone? Updates. Karen? I move we have our study group meet at Jim Lumley's Lilac Land. <laughs> Maybe in, about we'll figure out, Jim, you let us know when it's hot, the best time. Well, we just need we'll go from there. Sunny day or you no, know, but we could even meet inside to have got space. So whatever day and time is convenient to most people, I think we can make it work. Great. Great. That'd okay. be fun. <laughs> uh, yeah okay cool uh, all righty um well i'll uh i guess we should set our june meeting date while i have you all um indeed we have, we have one uh application that's likely to be submitted soon um i had initially told the applicant you know it's probably would be the first or second monday in june um I think I'm actually, I might not be here the second Monday in June. So I was thinking June 6th could work. Does that work for folks? It, I, it would still be via Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's okay with me. Works for me. Works for me. I think it's okay. fine. Hey. All right. So we'll say June 6th. Um, and hopefully more straightforward no jumping around between zoom calls uh <laughs> but thank you all for for bearing with me on that um and yeah i'll i'll keep everyone in the loop um when applications come in let you know any details but uh plan to touch base then okay okay thanks ben thank you what time on that what time on that Oh, uh, is the uh, three o'clock time still working for everyone? It's yeah. okay with me. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. Yes, yeah, so I'll say at 3 p.m. on June 6th. So uh, I guess we therefore, I move to adjourn. Second. Okay. I'll Thank do you. That. Great. Bye. Um, all in favor, I guess, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> all in favor. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Bye, thank you, All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.